In late 2021, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services revoked the state of Georgia's ability to charge premiums and allow work requirements in the state's Medicaid program. As you can imagine, litigation followed. Georgia challenged the CMS decision in court, and now the case of Georgia versus Brooks LaShore is before the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Georgia. It was back in October of 2020 that the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services had approved Georgia's Section 1115 demonstration waiver to allow work requirements and premiums in their Medicaid expansion waiver. They said that they wanted to cover individuals ages 19 to 64 up to about 100% of the federal poverty level if they could verify that they were working or engaging in specific work-related activities to the tune of about 80 hours a month. Individuals in households at or above 50% of the federal poverty level would need to pay a premium to keep their Medicaid. Then fast forward to 2021 and a new federal administration. The new Biden administration ordered the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to review all of these Section 1115 demonstration waivers from states. It subsequently notified states that it was deemed unacceptable to condition the receipt of Medicaid benefits on an ability to work, and they rescinded Georgia's waiver. They said you can't charge premiums and allow for these work requirements in your state Medicaid program. In the meantime, other states' litigation had continued, and Arkansas and New Hampshire found that their work requirements had made it all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court on their calendar. It was in April of 2022 that the U.S. Supreme Court tossed those lawsuits seeking work requirements and sent the cases back down to the trial court with instructions to dismiss. But litigation continued in lower courts about Georgia's work requirements at issue before the court is does the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have the authority to withdraw the waiver that they had originally granted to Georgia and did CMS have a good reason for its decision? Now, health policy experts and advocates argue that CMS did have authority and a good reason and they say the revocation was proper as Georgia's premiums and work requirements deter low-income individuals from accessing coverage and are not consistent with the objectives of the Medicaid program. We will keep you posted as this litigation continues.